Okay, Jom, boleh start lah. Okay. So, uh, you guys dah semayang makan semua kan? Dah. Dah, Doktor. Dah, dah. Okay, good. Sekejap. Okay, Sekejap. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, we've got two cases. Satu hematologi, satu lagi res, satu lagi resp kan? Oh, yeah. Okay, siapa nak start dulu? Uh, hemato dulu lah, Doktor. Okay, hemato, okay. Uh, so, the the outline, I mean the the flow of the of the set today is uh, so one person will present uh, everyone uh, have to listen carefully look at what good points you can learn okay from the presentation in terms of the skills presentation skills the point the word used uh, the phrases used and also uh, the flow lah the flow of the presentation and then uh, in the same time you have to jot down uh, specifically what can be done better okay for example like uh, i need quotes okay for example like uh, okay the person have mentioned uh, there is no uh, there is no there's no fever huh, for example uh, then you have to quote uh you have you have to quit <coughs> you have you have to quote from the presenter lah saya saya tak nak something yang vague macam tu i nak something yang uh, specific okay uh, example from the presentation itself okay uh, so and we going to all of you need to give feedback so you have to be we going to take turn lah i'm just calling i'm going to call names uh, and you guys need to give feedback uh, and finally, hmm, macam tu hanya we conclude lah the session. So start dengan Hemato first. Okay, would you like to give us some brief idea what the case is before you start? Uh, the case, uh, the diagnosis doctor? Uh, tak, the case is about what? Uh, Just rough a idea. Rough idea, yeah. Huh. Uh, patient presented with fever. Huh? But uh, once investigation was done, uh, hmm. it turned to somehow, apa kata, ada underlying dia. Okay, 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 good, good. So the initial presentation is fever and then finally it turns out to be hematological. Ah, problem. yes, doctor. Okay, so let's begin. Okay. Eh, sir, kita start dengan umul kitab Fatiha. Tak start lagi. Okay. Kasi. Okay. Okay. Boleh. Jap, eh saya tinggal. Ah, dah nampak ke? Nampak ke? Dah nampak slide. Ada oh, nampak dah? Ya? Dah dah. Nampak. Ah, okay. Oh, so you gonna slide lah. You are you going to read? Oh. I thought long case macam kan present ke? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Tak, tak apa, tak apa. Kalau nak ni, I lagi suka. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, tak apa, tak apa. You guys buat slide ke? Dia ada, dia ada pesan buat slide juga? Ah, yes. Ah, buat okay. slide juga. Oh, ya ke? Hmm, boleh juga. Saya tak acik lah kalau buat presentation dan buat slides. <laughs> kan? Okay, unless... Uh, okay, tak apa, tak apa, tak apa. This time okay. Okay, good, good. So, okay, continue. <laughs> okay, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay. Uh, so, this is basically uh, the identification of my patient. Uh, name uh, Adik Khairul Anwar, age one month from Kemaman, Terengganu. Hmm. So basically the chief complaint is uh, he is uh, one years old, eight month Malay boy uh, was referred from Darum Akmur Medical Center to HTA uh, with the complaint of fever for five days duration associated with pain and poor feeding prior to admission. So basically on day one, 
of fever. Uh, he was apparently well until five day prior to admission, whereby he started to have fever. So the fever uh, is said to be high graded uh, by his mom with documented temperature of about oh, 38.9 degrees Celsius, but it is not associated with chills and origo. So his mother claimed that the fever is on and off and particularly has early morning spike. He was given a uh, Panadol and sponging was done. However, it was not resolved and the fever uh, is associated with pallor and poor feeding. So regarding the pallor, his mother noticed that her child would look pallor uh, since the second day the fever started. So his mother also stated that previously, when her son developed fever, there will be facial pallor also. However, she denied any history of rashes, easy bruising, or bleeding tendency of the patient. And the pallor is not associated with any shortness of breath, weakness, and lethargy. There is also no family history of blood disorder. So his mother also claimed that uh, <clears throat> on uh, the child refused to eat since the third day of fever. He can only tolerate soft food and liquid, but in small amount. And it is, she said that the diaper changes also reduced from five times per day to two times per day uh, since the third day. He also seemed to be irritable and unable to sleep due to the illnesses. However, the child is still active and play well during the day. There is no dry lips and sunken eyes noted. Otherwise, her mother denied any history of URTI symptoms such as runny nose and cough. There is also no history of rashes, injected eye, nausea and vomiting during that day. So on day four of illnesses, he started to have rapid breathing that is associated with noisy breathing and nasal flare. So his mother also noticed the slight abdominal distension uh, uh, on his body. And he was also in at become more inactive and lethargy during that day. Thus, due to that condition, his mother brought him to the private clinic uh, later at night. He was given a game by the dog and been nebulized one time at the clinic. So at this particular clinic, his mother said that uh, he request uh, the he request from the clinic to do the blood investigation to his son, and the blood result. Uh, uh, she said that to have low uh, blood cell with high, uh, kata, high uh, white cell count. So, in view to this matter, the she, the mother, was advised to go to the hospital. So on the day five, which is the next day, his mother then brought him to Darul Makmo Medical Center for further So there, the doctor informed that uh, his tonsil was enlarged. And during that time, he said that uh, his, uh, her son uh, was diagnosed with uh, infection of the tonsil and also on the throat, which I presume to be tonsillopharyngitis. So again, the blood investigation was done at the Arul Makmo Medical Center and revealed the same result as the clinic, which is low blood, low red blood cell count and high white blood cell count. And due to this uh, result, he was then referred to HDA to done further investigation. So on further questioning, uh, uh, revealed that uh, for uh, started four months ago, uh, Adik Khairwanwa frequently had fever almost every week and each episode of fever lasted for about three days. Uh, lagi, uh, kata? However, uh, for the previous uh, episode of fever, usually uh, it will relieve by medication. Only for this current admission, his fever lasted for more than three days. So he also had history of traveling to Kedah, Johor, and Cameron Highland about one week prior to the illnesses. 
Otherwise, there was no history of sick contact or family member with the same symptom and he does not live in dengue prone area. So for the systemic review, basically uh, none is uh, remarkable, it is unremarkable. So for the past medical history, uh, this is uh, his third hospitalization. So his first hospitalization is about 13 months ago due to the seizure. Uh, his second hospitalization is about 10 months ago due to circumcision. Uh, otherwise, it was uneventful. So for the drug history, he is not on any medication except for the Panadol itself. Otherwise, uh, there was no uh, history of drug or food allergy, no history of taking other supplement or traditional medicine. So for birth history, basically the antenatal is uneventful. For the intrapartum, uh, he was born at 37 weeks via SBD in Kuantan Medical Center with the birth weight about 2.6 kilogram and the birth was uneventful. So for the postnatal, it was uneventful. No blood screen was done to him. So for the developmental his uh, history, currently he can walk independently and can chew balls without falling and sit on the chair. For the fine motor, he can scribble spontaneously and build tower of three. For the speech, he can say two to three meaningful words such as mama and baba and can point to two to three body parts. For the social, he can meet, imitate housework, use phone, and also play well with other children. So for the nutritional history, uh, he was breastfed, breastfed until now for about every three hours. He was, uh, start winning at the age of six months old. Currently, he can take adult diet such as rice, chicken, fish and vegetable uh, about three times per day. So he is not a picky eater and he not eating any weird thing. So for the vaccination history, the immunization was completed up to his age. So uh, family history, it was a non-consanguineous marriage. Uh, he is the only child. His father has no non-medical illness, same to his mother. Uh, however, he said that his grandmother on his father's side has diabetes mellitus. Otherwise, all other family members are healthy. There is no history of malignancy or blood disorder run in the family. So for the social history, uh, his father is uh, 28 years old and work as wedding planner with the income range from about 1,000 to 4,000 per month based on the job availability. So his mother is 28 years old and a housewife. They live together in single story house at Kampung Geliga Kemaman with basic amenity. And his father is an active smoker, smoke about half box per day. Otherwise, both of his parents are non-alcoholic or no drug abuse. So <clears throat> for the physical examination, it was done on the first day of admission at the HDA. So on general inspection, basically the patient uh, was lying on the bed, alert and arousable. And there is a snow hurt uh, when he breathed. Uh, the patient uh, looked pale, looks pale, but not sinus or jaundice. There is no dysmorphic feature looking in this patient. And there is a cannula on the left dorsum hand with no active infusion. Otherwise, the patient is not in pain or respiratory distress. Uh, the hydration status and nutritional status is also good. So on hand examination, he had a warm periphery but with palmar pallor. However, there is no clubbing, no coelonychia, uh, no flipping tremor, and also no peripheral sinusis. The CRT is less than two seconds. BCG scar was normal on the left arm, not in the right leg. So on eye examination, uh, there is conjunctiva pallor but no jaundice. On mouth examination, Oral hygiene was good. There is no angular uh, stomatitis, no cocked tongue, 
and no glossitis. Uh, however, uh, on the tonsil examination, there is an enlarged tonsil, uh, presumably grade 3 noted in this patient. Otherwise, there is no lymph adenopathy and no anchor edema. So for the blood pressure, for the vital sign, the blood pressure is about 18, uh, apa kata, hypotension, slightly hypotension. Uh, for the temperature, normal 37. Respiratory rate, about 26. Uh, for the pulse rate, about 90 beats per minute. SpO2, uh, 98 under room air. So anthropometric measurement, uh, the weight is about 9 kilo below the third center and the height, uh, the length is 81 centimeter between the third to 10 center. So for the systemic examination, basically for the abdomen, the abdomen is slightly distended but moved with respiration. There is no surgical scar or dilated not, uh, vein noted and the umbilicus is uh, centrally located, not inverted. So on palpation, the abdomen was soft and non-tender. However, there is a palpable liver to see and below the costal margin. There is also, uh, apa kata? the tip of the spleen is also palpable. However, the kidney were not palpable. So on percussion, the abdomen was resonant with no shifting dullness, no fluid trail. However, there is a dull throat space. And on auscultation, bowel sound was heard. Uh, so basically, the other systemic examination are unremarkable. Uh, so for the summary, Encik uh, Khaib, Encik Budok, Adik Khairu Anwar, one year old, eight month, one year, eight month old Malay boy with no known medical illnesses was referred from Darumak Medical Center due to the fever for five days duration uh, associated with failure and macam mana nak kata suspicious blood test result lah and he also had history of recurring infection and uh, failure almost weekly since four months ago so on physical examination a river that patient is anemic were associated with hepatosplenomegaly and dull drop space. Uh, no jaundice, sign of iron deficiency anemia and lymph adenopathy noted. Uh, on throat examination, the throat, the throat is injected with the tonsil grade 3. So basically uh, up until now, uh, my provisional diagnosis will be thalassemia uh, with concurrent infection of acute tonsillopharyngitis because the patient uh, presented with fever and pallor and on physical examination patient was uh, apa kata, presented with hepatosplenomegaly however for the points again there is no family history of thalassemia and no jaundice presented in this patient so other my differential diagnosis could be iron deficiency anemia uh, leukemia and also lymphoma. So basically, uh, kenapa tu sekat? Kenapa saya sekat? Apa? Sekat itu? Tak ada. Okey saja. Tak, tak ada. Sekejap. Ah, dah boleh lah. So uh, basically the investigation that have been this patient, uh, the FBC reveal uh, HB uh, 9 gram which is low with total white blood cell count 42.6 which is four times the upper limits of normal. So for the peripheral blood film uh, show mild anisopoikilocytosis present Kata, contain SIGA cell, target cell and also teardrop cell. Serum iron study shows apa kata, low iron but normal ferritin. 
So the throat swap uh, show the growth uh, of Streptococcus pyogen. HP electrophoresis was done uh, and uh, river that patient had beta thalassemia. And for the viral antigen test, basically it is non-reactive and bone marrow expression uh, uh, basically not done in this patient. But to apa kata, to exclude my other differential diagnosis, bone marrow expression should be done in order to look the presence of hypercellularity and blood cell for the leukemia. So that's for the investigation. But for the management, uh, I will just say about the apa kata, general management for the thalassemia. Uh, the general, uh, the gen general management about the patient with thalassemia. So if the patient presented with symptomatic, apa kata, patient is symptomatic or HB is low than eight or nine, we need to do the blood transfusion. So there is, uh, according to PITS protocol, there is a target uh, for the blood transfusion in order for the patient to experience uh, normal physical activity and also normal growth. So basically the target for the blood transfusion is to maintain the pre-transfusion HB between 9 to 10. Uh, Post-transfusion HB is between uh, 13 to 15 and in the meantime between 12 to 12.5. So if the patient already undergone the blood transfusion therapy, we need to do at the same time, the iron insulation therapy in order to get rid the excess iron in this patient due to the blood transfusion. So basically, the agent that can be uh, given to this patient uh, the, is desferioxamine. Uh, okay. And apa lagi orang kata? Other management that can be done in this patient is the, apa kata, in general, is the splenectomy, uh, especially if the patient uh, experience hypersplenism, which is the patient require more blood transfusion than its normal time to maintain the HB level. So for his acute tonsillopharyngitis, basically they are, apa kata? They are conservative management of it, such as analgesic, uh, and also antipyretic to relieve fever and also pain. And since the patient has poor PD, maybe due to the painful during swallowing, we need to ensure the adequate hydration and also nutrition. And in order to tackle the infection by the uh, streptococcus pyogen, we need to administer antibiotic to the patient, either penicillin-based or cephalosporin-based, such as cetriazone. So basically, that's all for my presentation, Doctor. Okay, good, good. Uh, hey, you, where do you get these slides? Huh? The slide? You bought sendiri? Uh, template, you know, Doctor. Template dapat mana? Apa? Where, where do you get the template? Uh, dalam YouTube, Doctor. Maksudnya macam ni, you download dari YouTube? Ah, saya download dari YouTube. Eh, kalau, kalau Doctor nak template, saya ada je. So, dia ada banyak template tau? Uh, dia ada satu je. Oh, that's very nice, no? <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, good, good, good. Okay, any comments? Start from Amirul Idlan. I want, I, want, I want you to highlight what good about the presentation. And then after one cycle, then we talk about what can be improved. And then we conclude. Okay, Amirul Idlan. Okay, so okay, so the positive part about uh Hazik presentation is he had a good uh chronological order of the history of presenting illness. I can see the clearly where in term go uh day by day. Okay, that's the good part. Uh, okay, eh. I think that's it, and it also rule out any uh blood bleeding disorder. Uh, also rule out uh jaundice to rule out any hemolytic anemia. Okay, so all part of the anemia has it as cover about it. That is the good part. Okay, okay. okay good, good. Next is Ambil. Ambil Bohanuddin. Yes, yes. Okay. 
Uh, so, uh, there are many uh, good points for Hazik's presentation, but I want just want to highlight about uh, when uh, he's telling about the chronological order too, uh, he used the same same unit, like macam five days ago, like uh, one day means uh, on during fever, uh, she, uh, he tells that on, on day four of fever, uh, there is a PBD like that. Mm. Means there is uh, one reference point. Uh. Okay, good, good. That's a very good point. Then that, that's all I want to highlight. <laughs> okay, good, good. Next, no Nadia Ardila. Uh, for me, uh, the good part is because uh, his presentation is uh, one by one, so it's not too rushed or not too slow. That's the uh, good way for us to stay focused. And if I want to add, maybe uh, I want to know the detail about the recurrent fever. Is it the same characteristic as this one, like apart from the duration? As well as is, that, uh, is the, the throat injection, is it uh, recurrent as well or not? And uh, uh, for the throat infection, uh, this is the first time. But hmm. for the previous uh, the fever, that is the same characteristic, but usually lasted for about three days. As compared to this one, five day. Okay, 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 good, 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 good. Okay, Nur Ain Zuhari. What's good about the presentation? Hey, by the way, how, how how long? I mean, how many minutes you've got in your exam for presentation? Uh, we actually have the modified long case. A new new way of exam, doctor. So we haven't got the real time of our exam. How many minutes? It's about thirty to forty minutes, including presentation, yeah. including discussion. Okay, okay. Hmm. Okay, so okay. Uh, okay. Next, uh, Zur Ain Zuhari. Okay, for Hazik presentation, uh, like. Uh, it just said I like that I can follow the sequence of the story. I also uh, I also like that uh, what was it? Uh, has it highlights uh the how is it um highlight the the reasons or the reasons that uh, he referred to hospital the, uh, so that we understand the causes or the reason for admission so very clear hmm. okay, okay, okay. okay 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 understand okay uh okay uh so let me add up uh i think uh i like the flow i like the flow of the presentation uh and i think there's a lot of thinking being put in present in the presentation I'm not sure whether the same thinking has been put during the clucking, but definitely there's a good uh, systematic way of thinking being put during the presentation. For example, okay, for example, you've mentioned there's no rashes, uh, there's no injected eye. Uh, when when you present about the history of presenting complaint for rapid breathing, kan? you said that he's got rapid breathing, rapid breathing, and if not mistaken, SOP, kan? Uh, <laughs> Good. Ah uh, yes, yes. Uh, so you did mention there's no rashes, injected eye. I think you are trying to rule out measles. Am I right? Ah uh, uh, yes, doctor. So that's very good. Uh, and then uh, about the pillow, you you I mean you clump all the positive and negative, uh, important and negative together. I mean that shows that you are thinking about uh, thalassemia. You are thinking about hemolysis. That's very good. Okay. Uh, and then. Uh, the description of the flow of referral too, that's very good as well. Started from the GP uh, and then to the Darum Akmur and then to HTA. Uh, and then uh, hmm, the rest I think been mentioned by your colleagues. Huh? Good, good. Okay, now what can be done better? Okay, we start with this one. Uh, so Rahil, you three. Kirahil, what can be done better? Well, uh, I think 
because he mentioned uh, abdominal distension in rapid uh, during rapid breathing the okay. symptoms uh well is it uh, i would like him to clarify is it the abdominal distension only happen during the rapid breathing or the abdominal distension uh, is another symptoms that uh, has happened before like is it uh, why why do you put it in the rapid breathing no because uh, nak nak jemakkan slide sebenarnya uh, sebenar, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, to be clear that uh, the abdominal distension, uh, distension uh, his mother realized uh, happened for about four months ago mm -hmm. started to increase in size no started to become more distended than before uh -huh. macam mana nak kata macam itulah uh, I Okay, I understand. Ah. Okay, thank you. Uh, just, just to clarify that maybe uh, for another symptoms, we should put it uh, macam tempat lain <laughs> sebab takut, takut confusing. Ha, tu je. Uh, otherwise, uh, that's, I think it's good. Uh, uh, he's confident enough. <laughs> uh, okay. Nothing, nothing much. Okay, good, good. Good. Uh, I agree. I agree with that. Okay. Uh, by the way, actually, I want to add on. Uh, on the what good about the presentation. Uh, you've been very systematic at some point. Okay, but at another point, there is a bit of um, incongruence. I would say. Uh, tapi, uh, however, there's a very good systematic way of present presentation. For example, when you discuss pelo, I really like it. Okay, you you are quite systematic. You know in a way that you presented i think the way of thinking is when you say about pelo you mentioned the possible causes can you mention the possible causes uh, for example a uh, point that leads to possible causes of pelo for example you mentioned macam tadi yang you kata uh, pelan no no bleeding tendency no rashes uh what you mention eh? Okay, and And then you did after that you explore the possible complication of pelo, which is anemia, lah, symptomatic anemia. Then you also mentioned, however, there's no uh, and on top of that, there is no breathlessness, no lethargy. So you there's a two two, I mean there's a separate you separate them, all the symptoms and signs, all the symptoms according to the possible causes that can help us to think, okay, uh, oh this this guy is thinking about the, it, it, uh, is it possibly become uh, due to uh, hemolysis or due to uh, bleeding uh, and then the complication of anemia itself so that's very good no? okay okay uh, Shaira Nurul Shahira what can be done better so I think um, for the part uh, the patient had a frequent fever since four months ago so I just want to know more details regarding uh, did the mother bring the son uh, to any clinic because frequent fever for almost every week and then um, yeah. yeah any back investigation done instead of giving medication so I think I want to know more about that. So before this uh, no only sponging and apa kata bagi PCM je dah relieve the fever. Hmm. Okay. Dia pun sekejap eh, dia punya fever waktu dulu-dulu walaupun recurrent Okay, around 3 days kan dia punya show Okay, I agree, I agree Can, uh, okay, no shots one okay. uh, I think uh, I did not really get because at first a uh, patient having fever and also having uh, L uh, uh, prolonged fever like uh, like for five days and also having failure and I have been thinking of uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia as it is the most common childhood malignancy because some of the symptoms can suggest of malignancy symptoms right mm. but how can uh, at first place he tell that, uh, that uh, the diagnosis will be thalassemia instead of other disease because there is no family history of uh, uh, inheritance, uh, family inheritance of thalassemia, body pill. 
Uh, because uh, first of all, I do not really suspect the lymphoma because uh, there is a leukemia. Leukemia. Eh? Hmm. Okay, lymphoblastic leukemia. Ella. Uh, macam mana nak kata? Uh, it's in your differential lah, but to be, I, I think I really agree with Nusha Zwani. It should be at the top of your list. Sebab macam mana saya nak kata? Ya, saya tanya dia punya uh, signs of bone marrow separation semua tu, no bleeding tendency semua tu, no bone pain. Hmm. Macam mana saya nak kata? Look, macam mana nak kata yang tu? But you have to bear in mind this uh, this child got like you've mentioned got uh, two cell line involvement kan? So then any any child that got like more than one cell line involvement, uh, either cytopenia or cytosis, uh, you have to think of marrow issues lah. Something wrong with the marrow, okay? Uh, and when we talk about melo, then at this age, uh, the the thing that worries us the most is actually of course leukemia, lah, right? So with the high total white, uh, up to forty, which is quite rare in common infection, uh, there are few infection that can have very high total white uh, associated, especially associated with melo. Uh, but definitely we have to think about L and leukemia. Uh, because the because the mother highlight it uh, highlight because the, at the GP one they highlight uh, high total white and then at uh, the mama also highlight high total white uh, then because you highlighted highlighted it then usually high total white we will think of uh, cancer then that's why it has to be at the top of the list okay 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 that's I agree. Okay, uh, so let me add. Uh, I like the way you describe the fever. Okay, that's quite extensive. Uh, you, you, you even mentioned early morning spike. Okay, a lot of time people say fever, they will just mention about ch uh, chills and rigors, uh, documented temperature. Uh, but uh, you can add on. Okay, you can add on on description of fever. Uh, for example, like you can mention this is a, an intermittent fever. Cotidian fever, you can actually describe the fever. There's a lot of way to describe fever. Okay, uh, uh, tla. and then, uh, okay, uh, so I do agree with some of your friends, uh, that sometimes, uh, you have to, to separate the HOPI clearly, lah, uh, macam, Especially the abdominal distended dengan respectively complaint tu. Masa macam tak apa-apa match. Unless, unless, kalau you nak associate, you nak relate the abdominal distension that uh, with the recipe means you want to say that the abdominal distension uh, causing the breathing, breathing, breathing difficulties lah. Because of course, yeah, bila you ada distended abdomen kan, they can splint your diaphragm, especially you have the hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, they can splint your diaphragm. Uh, one of the symptoms is, uh, is uh, breathing with your problem. Uh, and then, uh, okay, and tujah, I say and tujah, I say the HOPI is quite okay. Uh, the physical examination, however, uh, you've mentioned about flapping tremor, we rarely do this in in young children now, one year, eight months old, especially. Uh, and then, uh, uh, the rest okay. Go. I think the rest physical examination is okay. Um, you did mention about the drop space. Okay, the drop space. Uh, cuma at one year, eight months old, actually two cm below subcostal margin is quite okay. No, liver, liver. Uh, two cm below subcostal subcostal margin is considered. We is a we still can consider it's normal lah because it's not even two years old. Usually after two years old, then if it is more than two cm, then we might be a bit worried. But but two cm less than two years old is quite is quite normal. But the dull trap space uh, is subjective. But that 
that signify a splenomegaly okay okay that's very good uh the rest okay uh anything else among your i mean any of you want to add on especially on the management the diagnosis differential diagnosis investigation before i proceed and then okay uh so in terms of management uh in terms of manage in terms of investigation okay anything any uh, Okay, uh, so uh, bear in mind, bear in mind, anything you do, the first thing is the acute management first. Okay, because this child is considered acute, this is an acute presentation. So always manage acutely. Investigation also investigate something that is acute. Okay, so the acute presentation is fever and pelo, kan? So investigation should be along that line lah. Investigation for fever, apa dia? Uh, so in fact, it's cleaning. Because hep B, hep C, yang tu, yang tu the third line lah, I would say that is, that is the third, fourth line. Okay, the first line will be FBC. And FBC, you have to, the main thing is patient datang and pelo. Okay, what information you is very important in the FBC? Patient with pelo, anyone? In the FBC, what you have to stress on? First hemoglobin, and then what else? Blood white MCV. blood count okay ah yes mcv mch and mcv mch lactic count and also rbc this is the four the five things lah hb mcv mch rbc and lactic count this five is very important you have to mention this whenever you mention about anemia okay because it give you the, the it will give it will give you the diagnosis okay i just need this five to make up my diagnosis Okay, and then, uh, and then, uh, ada lah, ada, ada things like, uh, invest, uh, because it's pay low, uh, then you also need to have some L, uh, LFT lah, so that we know if pay low with jaundice, uh, some degree of jaundice, usually thalassemia, they, they come with jaundice lah, a bit of jaundice. And then, uh, in fact, screening, okay, very good, you've mentioned about the throat swap, Okay, actually that's the first line. Cuma kita rarely do throat swab here in Malaysia. Uh, and cuma culture tu usually later lah. It's a second, third line punya investigation. It's important investigation but uh, you have to arrange it later lah because we rarely get the culture very early on kan. Uh, okay, and then FBP, very good. Uh, but the main thing you want to see in the FBP is in this case, what is the main thing you want to see in the FBP? Uh, in case thalassemia, ke doctor? Uh, tak, in this particular case lah. Okay, because, I think because your thought is thalassemia kan, that's why you presented thalassemia punya ni. But actually, in any case, with tot high total white, your first, in the, in the, the first thing you want to look at the FBP is the blood cell. Blood cell. Uh, blood cell. So you have to mention no blood cell. Okay? No blood cell have to mention, okay? No blood cell, no abnormal cell, and then you've mentioned all the cell that might suggest the ni lah, thalassemia. HB analysis, usually I don't I don't want HB analysis because you don't get HB analysis after one month. Okay, only after one month, then only you get the results. Uh, okay, and then finally the management, again, you have to focus on the acute first. So what is the acute management? Okay, uh, good 
uh, you've mentioned about the nutrition, about the fluid, antibiotic, uh, fever and paroxysm management, uh, and then splenectomy tu, yang tu, kalau you cakap tu, it cause you more trouble than good. Okay, because you are digging your own grave. Because nowadays we are going away from splenectomy, there's a lot of complication. Actually, and people die because of splenectomy, splenectomy more than people die because of thalassemia to itself. I mean, the complication of splenectomy though is worse, far worse than complication of thalassemia. Okay, unless kalau, I mean, if you got, if, if you got good control of thalassemia, you'll be more likely to live up to 60, 70. But if you do a splenectomy, you are more likely to die at 30 or 40. Okay, because of the uh, uh, secondary immunodeficient, uh, immunodeficiency. Uh, so we don't talk about splenectomy uh, nowadays, especially in pediatric. Uh. So uh, untuk thalassemia, even chelating agent is far down there. Because patient, this is a newly diagnosed patient, one year, eight months old, most likely is beta major. Uh, eh, beta, most likely this is beta, is, this is intermediate lah, uh, most likely. Either, uh, H, dia kata beta kan dia sebut then most likely this is beta intermediate punya beta lah uh, not beta major because beta major they present very early lah at 6 months old by the time by 1 year they usually already uh, transfusion dependent okay anyway uh, so tu je lah kot and whenever you talk about management okay always talk about A, B, C, D tau kan A, B, C, D Okay, airway, breathing, circulation. Because this child, you stress on the snow, kan? You kata patient in the snow. So, bila you cakap patient in the snow, I, you know what I'm thinking of? Because you mentioned about snoring. Uh, I thought you're going to, your differential will be, you know, like, uh, things that affect the upper airway, uh, croup ke. Because croup, they can get to high total white tau, croups. Uh, usually, it's lymphocyte now. And then, uh, there are things along that line, tapi it's not. Because you stress on the snow, tapi you don't mention anything yang we worried about snoring. Okay, uh, so there are always types of airway, breathing, circulation, and then any disability, neurological, then only the other management, the pyrexia, the nutrition, uh, antibiotics, uh, and then finally, baru the chronic one diagnosis uh, obtained. Confirm lah. Okay. Okay, ada soalan. Anyone else want to add on? Okay lah. Okay, so remember, uh, you need, and uh, the other thing is, you need a systematic approach to differential diagnosis. I always stress this uh, to all your, to all my students lah. So, um, the way I use is, the way I, I do it is, I'm using the acronyms of vitamin A, B, C, D, E, K. Pernah dengar kan, the, the acronyms kan? So, you divide the, your differential into either by etiology or by anatomy or by physiology. Doesn't matter, as long as there's a structure in it. Okay, even by medication, by treatment pun boleh. Okay, for, for example, in this case kan, patient datang dengan fever with pelo. Okay, fever with pelo. So, what is the differential diagnosis? V, vitamin. Okay, vascular. Is there any vascular causes of fever and pelo? Okay, we check lah hemolysis kan? Hemolysis lah. Maybe hemolysis, GCPD ke. Uh, thalassemia, okay lah. Boleh lah juga thalassemia. Okay, and then apa lagi? Vitamin I, infectious. Infectious is, is, is should be at the top of the list. Infection and also malignancy. Okay, infections such as, apa infection yang datang dengan, can datang dengan pelo, and then high total white? Hmm? What sort of infection yang affect you punya pelo, yang you cause pelo? Malaria? Malaria, ya. You, malaria, malaria. Oh. Malaria selalunya dia datang dengan prolonged fever lah, this one only five days. Uh, malaria, I, I don't think so lah. Malaria dia datang, dia datang dengan pelo, tapi dia tak high total white. Maksudnya malaria tak high total white. Okay, ada high total white, you can get, you know, the atypical infection, mycoplasma. Okay, anything kan, you tak tahu, you just mention mycoplasma. It's okay. 
you will get you you won't be penalized because there is a master in disguise so mycoplasma uh, and then parvovirus uh, is common parvovirus lah parvovirus is a culprit lah selalu macam ni parvovirus apa uh, siapa yang that's why uh, rashes is very important kan slap cheek disease uh, tapi parvovirus lah B17 yang common uh, and then apa lagi infection uh, Okay, ada lah, ada ada few infection yang cause pelo and ni, high total white. Tapi high total white, lagi satu yang paling common is petasis lah. Tapi this child dia tak ada petasis with symptoms kan. Then kalau patient ada cough, barking cough, prolonged cough and then ada high total white, top of the list will be petasis. Okay, only petasis yang boleh dapat. Not many infection yang boleh dapat. Total white up to 200, 100 plus uh, is will be petasis. Okay, uh, and then infectious. And then T, trauma tak ada. A, autoantibody. Oh, you boleh uh, letak GSPD, well tak nam. Atau GSPD juga autoantibody. Uh, hemolysis lah, hemolysis kan. Autoimmune hemolysis ataupun uh, IHA ke, cold IHA ke, warm IHA ke. And then M is uh, what? Metabolic. So, is there any metabolic condition that can present with this? Pelo. Not much lah actually. Okay. Uh, and then I, idiopathic. Uh, N. And is apa? Neoplasm kan? Uh, especially leukemia. So you can divide. Okay, the differential diagnosis for this case uh, is uh, I divided the differential diagnosis according to etiology. Okay, for example, vascular causes of etiology uh, such as blah 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 blah. Okay, infectious causes such as blah 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 blah. And then neoplasm such as blah 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 blah. Okay, and then lymphoma is unlike quite unlikely in this case. Okay, lymphoma you have you need a uh, uh, lymphadenopathy lah to dance lymphoma either a group uh, of lymph nodes ataupun isolated, isolated lymph nodes but uh, the only point that I'm, I'm thinking of lymphoma is the snoring tu lah because I thought it's something like obstruction of the of the airway because of uh, thoracic, intrathoracic nya lymph nodes okay tu lah okay otherwise okay kot Okay, shall we continue on the next one? Siapa? Ah, uh, me. Okay, I'm um, Ithlan. Okay. okay, good. Ithlan. Eh, hey, kejap, kejap, kejap. Can you give me like uh, five minutes? Kejap eh. Uh, okay. 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 Okay, boleh nampak? Boleh. Okay, so uh, so this is uh, my patient identification, Farah Sofia, six years. Uh, four months old. So, source of uh, clarking is from patient's mother. So, for the chief complaint, Farah Sofia, a six years old Malay girl with underlying cerebral palsy and also uh, GERD, was brought to the emergency department of IMC with complaint of rapid breathing for one day, preceded by cough for six days, also fever for two days duration. So for history of presenting illness, patient was relatively well until six days prior to admission. She developed sudden onset of cough after drinking mix. It was productive in nature with clear sputum, but not any blood noted. 
it also associated with post-tasi vomiting of the milk. Then uh, the cough uh, from the first episode of cough became intermittent and not resolved after that. And the mother did not take any medications to relieve the symptom. And four days prior to that, the symptom become yellowish in color. However, there was no any blood. Otherwise, uh, for this cough presentation, there was no any barking or whooping cough, no any facial congestion or any bluish discoloration. And along with the cough, uh, Farah developed loss of appetite, which normally she will drink pediatrician for about four ounces per serving for three times per day. However, due to this current condition, she uh, refused to drink because of the cough, tolerating only half of the daily meal. Okay. On, on four days of the cough, uh, she then developed fever, which uh, was persistent in nature, associated with chills and rigor. And then the mother brought her to general practitioner and she was given antibiotic, syrup parastamol and also perrectal parastamol. His mother also tried to relieve the fever by tepid sponging. However, upon the treatment, the fever was only partially relieved and the documented temperature was not remembered by the mother. Okay. And on the day of emission, she developed sudden onset of rapid breathing. It also associated with irritability and lethargy. However, there was no any added sound noted such as stryzer or also wheezing. So pertaining to these uh, symptoms, she was brought by her mother to ED for medical attention. For the questioning, this was her first admission for this current, uh, for this typical, for the symptom presentation, her mother uh, also noticed that she usually had difficulty of swallowing of meat and sometimes choking of meat since one month old. However, uh, she was not uh, fed by any tube feeding or any alternative feeding lah. So otherwise, her mother denied of any feeding episode prior to the drinking mix no any neck swelling or neck mass notice, no other URTI symptoms, no any sick contact or history of traveling, no history of atopy or family history of atopy, and no other, sim other system was unremarkable. So regarding the cerebral palsy, she was admitted to an ICU after birth for five days due to hypoxia preceded by prolonged labor. Then she discharged from an ICU and admitted to pediatric wards for another 11 days. Uh, CT scan and MRI were done and her mother was told that she had brain injury. At age of one month old, she was diagnosed with dystonic cerebral palsy and was followed up at HTA once every three months. She also had multiple episodes of fitting since four months old and was given anti syrup and continued the medication till two years old and the symptom of fitting resolved. Regarding the GERD, she also was diagnosed with GERD since one year old at HTA with complaint of vomiting, lethargy and also poor, poor oral intakes. And she was admitted uh, for two weeks at pediatric ward. However, the mother unsure of treatment given. For the past medical and surgical uh, history, other than uh, cerebral palsy and also GERD, she was uh, electively admitted for 11 to extraction. It was uneventful. Otherwise, there was no any other chronic illnesses. For drug history, she was on regular medication of ranitidine two times daily for GERD. Otherwise, there was no any known drugs or food allergy, not taking any supplement or alternative medication. For birth history, antenatally was uneventful as the mother had no any comorbidities such as GDM or hypertension during pregnancy. Intrapartumly, the child was born through vacuum assisted delivery at 40 weeks of gestational age, her birth weight uh, was 2.89 kg. Postnatally, despite of admission of an ICU mentioned earlier, her mother denied of having any uh, medical condition. For nutritional history, uh, she, was current, uh, she was exclusively breastfed until one month old. Then she started with formula milk and currently was on pediatric until now. And she started weaning on with Nestum at age one year old. However, this continued because she cannot tolerate solid food till now. For the growth and developmental history, 
uh, for the gross motor, she unable to ambulate herself, cannot walk or crawl and need special wheelchair. For fine motor, and he can do palma grass. For speech or language, uh, he, she can turn her head to sound and babbling in single syllables. For social, cannot fit uh, dress or toilet training by herself. And for my conclusion, this uh, correspond to global developmental delay, which age correspond to six to seven months old. Currently, she is grade one student at Pendidikan Khas Taman Guru Kuantan. For immunization history, she was benefit according to immunization schedule of uh, MOH Malaysia. No any complication uh, despite our vaccination. For the family history, uh, she was our first, our first daughter uh, from two siblings. All other uh, family was uh, no any medical illnesses. Uh, his father uh, had no uh, 38 years old and his mother was 36 years old. Uh, for her youngest brother, uh, also no any non-medical illness, no any uh, same history of uh, same symptom like uh, her. For social history, currently they live at Indra Sempurna, Gambang with her parents and her younger brother with total of four equipment. So make it household income for both parents is about uh, 5,000 per month. So in summary, my patient, six years old girl with underlying cerebral palsy and also good on ranitidine, currently admitted due to choking of milk for six days duration, wasn't with fever and yearly sputum for two days duration and preceded by rapid breathing on day of admission. So for physical admission was done on day three of admission. She was conscious and alert, lying comfortably on bed with her mother at periphery. Uh, she appeared to keep neck, but not any other sign of respiratory distress, not any, any pain. Uh, there was brandula attached and left dorsal of hand with active infusion of IV penicillin. However, there was no any other attachment. And on peripherally, there was no any finger clubbing. Uh, capillary fit time less than two seconds, not any jaundice or pallor noted. There was angular stomatitis noted, but no white coated uh, tongue, no uh, enlarged tonsil. No any cyanosis, no palpable leaf node, no any neck mass, and also no pedal edema. So for the vital sign, uh, all was normal except for respiratory rate was tachypneic, 30 breaths per minute, and also the patient was uh, febrile, 38.8 degrees Celsius. Anthropometric measurement, uh, this patient uh, have below third percentile for weight and high risk. 10 kilogram and also 19 centimeter respectively. So my conclusion in this patient is having failure to drive. So for, I focus on respiratory examination. For inspection, the chest move for his respiration, no any chest deformity noted, and no any scar, no subcortical or intercostal recession noted. Wheezing was not heard. On palpation, the, tra the trachea was centrally located, the chest expansion was equal bilaterally. The tactile vocal prometheus was reduced at middle and lower zone of right lung. And also there was dullness of percussion on the same zone. Uh, plus with crepitation was heard over the middle and lower zone of lung. Otherwise, the air entry was good, uh, uh, equal both sides. For neurological examination because of the patient of cerebral palsy, so in, on inspection, there was abnormal posture, flex and also the corticate of both upper and lower limb. However, unsure whether he has contracture or tremor. For uh, upper limb examination, uh, there is hypertonia of both uh, upper limb with power at least three. And they are hyper reflex and also present of spasticity. Uh, same with the lower limb with hypertonia power grade of three, at least three, hyper reflex, and also present of specificity and Babinski sign. Otherwise, other system were unremarkable. So in summary, on physical examination, the patient was febrile, tachypneic, and also there was evidence of consolidation with the evidence of right, middle, and lower zone finding of reduced vocal resonance, vocal fragmentation, dullness on percussion, and also crepitation with neurological deficit of spastic quadriplegia. 
So my professional diagnosis will be uh, aspiration pneumonia. Secondary to possible bulbar palsy with underlying cerebral palsy. Points for because of the symptom of suggesting of aspiration pneumonia, which is cough, postasy, vomiting, fever, and also rapid breathing, and also associated with allergy and also loss of appetite. The patient also have history of difficult swallowing and choking, might suggest of possible bulbar palsy, uh, and also history of hypoxia might indicate uh, HIE with uh, the cause of uh, cerebral palsy. The patient also have failure to thrive because of this uh, difficult to swallowing and consolidation uh, for aspiration pneumonia for right lung uh, by the prison of uh, physical examination suggests uh, this diagnosis. However, uh, there was no any symptom of drooling of saliva with, that might indicate bulbar palsy in this patient. Okay. Uh, my other differential diagnosis that I might think is because of the patient have good might be uh, aspiration pneumonitis due to the gastric content and because the patient might have esophagitis lead to esophagus stricture. Other differential diagnosis might be aspiration pneumonia secondary to laryngeal malaysia because laryngeal malaysia commonly have difficulty in swallowing but the points again in this case the patient doesn't have strido and also did not have snoring when sleeping and other possible diagnosis of pneumonia itself which is right lobar community acquired pneumonia because of the presentation of examination uh, direct to right lobar community acquired pneumonia okay so for investigation for so far i would like to do full blood count to look for any uh, evidence of uh, infection so in this case we can see that uh, the white blood cell is high with 15 over 4 with high neutrophil and also monocyte might suggestive of bacterial infection however i'm not sure why the platelet is low but it's at the lower board upper border of low lab the renal porphyry because of the patient have loss of appetite, difficulty in swallowing, I suspect of uh, electrolyte imbalance, which can see they have hyponatremia, hypokalemia, and other uh, electrolyte imbalance. For chest x-ray, uh, you might can see there is a slight uh, consolidation in the right middle and lower zone of the lung, with some haziness and a bronchogram. Yeah, well, the other part was unremarkable. So, and then there was an uh, inflammation test, which is reactive protein, which is increased, indicate of uh, Q inflammation. Uh, and also, I want to do sputum culture and sensitivity to look for the causes um, microorganism uh, for this patient for specific antibiotic later, and also blood culture and sensitivity. And for other differential diagnosis, size good, I want to do uh, OGDS to look for any esophagus stricture due to esophagitis and also laryngoscopy to look for laryngeal malaysia to look uh, for sign of omega, but it was not done in this patient. Okay. So for my management, basically for acute management, I would like to stable the patient by the secure the airway breathing and circulation. So for the uh, secondary airway, I would like to give oxygen therapy by non-invasive means in ventilation, such as uh, nesoprong or ventury mask. Rehydration, because of the patient have uh, electrolyte imbalance, so I would like to give uh, rehydration IV normal salines and check for input-output chart. And for fever, I would like to give syrup parastomol to relieve the fever if the patient have that cannot tolerate early, I like to give IV parastamol. And for infection, uh, because of this of case of pneumonia, I like to give IV penicillin. If the patient has allergic to penicillin, I like to change to IV sephrosin. Uh, for reintakes, I would like to consider NG tube feeding to avoid any uh, aspiration letter. So for the long-term management, I would like to refer uh, this patient to the chest physiotherapy and also to continue physical and occupational therapy for cerebral palsy, continue retinue for good, and also consider alternative feeding to avoid aspiration, might be NG tube feeding or gastrotomy feedings.
think that's all for my presentation. Very good, very good. Okay, good, good, good. Um, okay, so start dengan Nadia Ardila. Okay, what what's good about the presentation? Okay, uh, yeah, for me, what's good about the presentation is uh, he learn he separate the part, uh, underlying of this question so that he explain uh, according to the pathology so, so that we don't confuse ourselves. And then uh, what I want to know more is regarding uh, her CP, does, uh, she, she's already six years old but she never on tube feeding. So I want to know whether she's undergo follow-up uh, regular uh, physiotherapy or anything that been taught to the mom for her, for her child management before this, before this admission. Because it seemed like uh, there's no information regarding her, her progress of CP for six years. So that also I curious because I take it from case right up before. Lah. <laughs> mm. okay. Okay. okay, 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 good, 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 good. Okay, uh, has it any taker? Any, any, any comment? So, uh, basically for the comment, uh, I like the way lah. Uh, he presented quite tropi I chronologically yeah, just like before. <laughs> not too long, not too short, just nice. And for the development history. Uh, I love it because very detailed plus he give the condition that the patient experience such as the global developmental delay. So other than that, I don't know. So give conclusion, right? After, I mean, uh, yes, conclusion. Give conclusion. Okay, that's good, good. Okay, Rahim. Anything good? Uh, for me, uh, for me, it's good. I like the way he explained uh, each of the symptoms, like in very detail. For example, like cough here, yeah, he said like uh, productive, you know, blah, 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 blah. But it's very detailed for every symptom that he mentioned. And I also agree that uh, he also give his conclusion uh, whether uh, the part for the investigation and so on. Okay, good, good. Okay, don't go, Shazwani. Uh, I think my comment like other, other of my colleagues. Mm -hmm. So mm, she explained uh, detail every symptoms, every uh, everything that he write. Guys, jadi boleh saya dalam tiga minit kerja.
Okay, uh, guys, uh, actually I'm so sorry because uh, suddenly I've got a patient datang. Uh, so I got cleaning hari ni. Uh, anyway, so uh, I think, uh, okay, let me just give comment by that. Kita uh, saya janji 10 minit dengan patient. Okay, uh, eh, dengar kan? Dengar, Doktor. Dengar, dengar, dengar. Okay, uh, so in general, that's very good presentation. I really like it. Especially the fact that you introduce the patient first, okay? Because sometimes when you present, uh, when you present a case, you need to give the some idea to the to the listener. Uh, what are you? I mean, the background of the patient. So it's very good to say with underlying. You've mentioned underlying CT, but uh, but you can improve a bit by mentioning how severe is the CT. Okay, because if you say uh, a child with a uh, hemiplegic CP or maybe a diplegic CP, kan? Diplegic CP datang uh, with GMFCS, you know, GMFCS, CFCS, you know? Okay, so GMFCS level 1 datang dengan uh, this presentation, then the first thing in my list is actually infection. Okay, tapi kalau with level 5 GMFCS and then uh, so quadriplegic CP, bad bound, fully fully dependent. Then the first, the first in my diagnosis, the first at the top of the list is actually aspiration, lah. Okay, from okay, uh, but that's very good start. Uh, and you also mentioned not on tube feeding. If you mention this earlier, then it'll be better. Okay, you did mention later, lah. Uh, after what to what to pass medical history, sir. And then uh. The development history is very good. Uh, mm, I think overall it's very good presentation. Uh, cuma in terms of diagnosis kan, diagnosis, I think expiration is the first. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, you have to be clear when you present about the cough. Is it really cough or is it choking? You mentioned cough after feeding kan? Tapi you can yes. actually just ah uh, you can actually just say uh, ada choking. Mesti choking terus. Ah uh, cakap ada choking. Ada cough uh, and also choking. You sebut choking. You kalau you tak sure sebut cough juga tapi you boleh sebut choking terus. Because choking everyone know what is choking mm. is. It's not something mm. I really know. It's actually patient tell us they choke. Okay. <coughs> uh, and then you kena tanya uh, previous choking episode memang selalu choke ke? Because patient with GERD, dia memang akan selalu choke. Okay. Tapi, you have to understand, GERD doesn't mean they've got swallowing problem. Okay. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to come together. Because choke can present separately then GERD. Okay. Uh, cuma aspiration can come with both. Okay, aspiration can come with choke. Uh, usually choke akan lead to aspiration. Uh, and also GERD can lead to aspiration. But usually GERD, they, they, they become micro aspiration. So they, they have micro aspiration. Uh, okay. And then, uh, apa kita? Uh, I'm going to jump, I mean, uh, it's, it's not going to be very organized because I'm quite distracted with the patient just now. So anyway, um, Renitidin kan? Renitidin, you've mentioned about Renitidin. Actually, Renitidin dah, I rasa macam dah tak boleh guna. Recently, <laughs> dah boleh guna balik. Uh, tapi so far, kita dah stop guna Renitidin. Okay. And then, uh, apa dia? Oh, you you mentioned about the hypoxia kan? What do you mean? Ah, uh, yes. Hypoxia at, five, at day 5 of life? Macam boleh hypoxia at day 5 of life? Nak na indicate HIE tu. <laughs> tak tahu oh, cerita macam mana. Macam mana day 5 of life? Patient well, term baby kan? Hmm. Both well, tak admitted, tiba hypoxic. Eh tak, patient admitted to NIC after birth and admitted for 5 days. Sebab? Hypoxia. HIE ke apa? Mungkin tak. Because HIE sampai jadi CP macam ni, usually they mesti admitted for few days, for hmm. a few weeks pun. Kalau admitted for five days, macam mal HIE rarely dapat uh, ni lah. I think there must be something else oh, happen, tapi tak pernah. Okay, and then the BP is very high, it's 122 is high. I don't think this is normal to him, to her. 
mm-hmm. dia check back okay the BP is high and then you mentioned vocal uh, you mentioned tactile vocal parameters you can increase tactile vocal parameters okay first uh, this child I believe uh, the CFCS uh, the MACS I don't think he can she can communicate uh, verbally with the mom kan then how are you assessing the vocal parameters uh, you may assess the tactile parameters which I'm not sure how tactile tactile pun tak tahu macam you know you not check <laughs> kan okay. Okay, vocal and tactile parameters and then they tak complete dengan your findings sebab you kata consolidation okay consolidation hmm. vocal parameters should increase ke reduce in consolidation reduce. yeah reduce i think it's increase vocal mm-hmm. vocal resonance increase okay mm-hmm. uh, in consolidation vocal resonance increase okay uh, tactile parameters tactile parameters i rasa reduce i think ada i say tactile uh, parameters reduce you check balik you check balik tapi mm-hmm. i rasa macam something tak betul lah and then uh, you mentioned kalau for infection you cakap kalau allergic to penicillin you bagi cefuroxim kan mm-hmm. okay uh, in practice we don't do that okay kalau allergic to penicillin kita tak bagi cefuroxim kita akan bagi other group and most of the time is uh, macrolides lah uh, which is uh, es okay es or azithromycin okay because dia ada cross allergic lah okay, this is more to uh, management and then the differential diagnosis also um, you've got I, I think you put a lot of thinking that's very good you put a lot of thinking on come up with the differential diagnosis but I think there's a bit of uh, confusion there for example um, laryngomalacia kan okay laryngomalacia ni is a developmental problem I mean development of the is a development of the ni lah is the of your vocal cord vocal cord kan so you don't diagnose patient is well from birth and then suddenly develop uh apa tu laryngomalacia no it sh- hmm. it should is something that you diagnose at birth because mal- uh, laryngomalacia it resolve after a while most baby with lung- that require even those yang require uh trachea kan trachea trachea tube uh it reversible lah so after a while we can remove the trachea tube once the malasi airway become hardened because Malaysia ni basically uh, I mean the delayed in uh, in what you call it in the hardening lah hardening of the of the ligaments of the vocal cord so it's something in temporary uh, because kalau patient ni main dia laryngeal Malaysia dia ada stridor from beginning okay from lahir so and then I think there's something some confusion about the uh, Bulbar palsy because bulbar palsy is lower motor or upper motor? Apa? Ya ke apa? Because the best, the best of my knowledge I think bulbar palsy is lower, is pseudo bulbar palsy is upper hmm? In patient okay. with upper, upper motor neural lesion uh, especially macam CP kan, they got pseudo bulbar palsy because it's actually at the at the upper up lah, uh, at the medulla semua benda lah, at the brain stem so it's not problem at the uh, cranial nerve hmm. okay, bulbar palsy is cranial nerve punya problem it's similar to bulbar palsy lah, bulbar palsy is special nerve bulbar palsy is uh, cranial nerve 10, 9, 11 macam tu okay, but that's very good uh, thought you've put uh, okay, tu lagi satu and then uh, for management, okay patient with uh, aspiration okay this child is aspiration lah you can you can you can confidently say this is aspiration okay uh, choking not necessarily leads to aspiration tapi aspiration usually uh, preceded by choking okay choking or reflux okay uh, and then uh, uh, so you can actually mention aspiration so the way you manage the way you manage include the investigation lah. investigation for aspiration is you you can do OGDS there's two ways okay you can do OGDS OGDS can be both diagnosing and therapeutic and also prognosing okay well uh, OGDS is a gold standard lah. but we don't 
there's not many uh, kalau you minat untuk jadi gastroenterologist you can be pediatric gastroenterologist lah kat Malaysia ni ada tiga orang je and one baru je retire so you got only two lah uh, two ke three, two kot okay dia mungkin ada tiga kot okay anyway so uh, uh, tapi usually what we do is less invasive kita buat uh, kita buat barium study lah okay uh, barium study so basically we look at reflux. Okay, kita tengok reflux. So, diagnose GERD lah. GERD and so reflux. So, barium study. Uh, atau gastrograph gastrographin lah. Gastrographin. Macam tu lah nama dia. Dengar lah. Tapi barium study lah. Uh, right, and cuma usually because patient dah 6 year old, previously memang uh, not on tube feeding. Then the first step is swallowing assessment. Okay, you have to assess the swallowing first. Okay, and then kalau dia tak boleh swallow, baru you suggest uh, uh, feeding tube lah, feeding tube ataupun pad atau button lah. Uh, okay, uh, macam tu lah. And then uh, pneumonitis, okay, aspiration, aspiration pneumonitis, they can have fever lah, usually they can have fever, tapi uh, then they don't have obvious sign of infection. Like in this case, from the investigation, I think you 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 check up the obvious sign of infection then you can say just pneumonia especially pneumonia okay lagi satu last point okay last point is uh, your examination sorry i to i to miss the examination okay when you examine a child with cp kan with a chronic disease uh, neuro neurodevelopmental disease okay you have to examine you when you examine like any child your agenda is first to come up with the diagnosis, to support your history to come up with the diagnosis and the second agenda is to find complication okay, either complication from the acute problem or complication from the underlying problem okay, in this case complication of acute problem you dah mention tadi lah the reduced breast sound and semua benda tu kan and tachypnic, so that's a complication of pneumonia itself and then complication of a chronic problem you have to uh, explicit, explicitly look for Okay, contoh kan, patient macam CP, uh, apa, body plastic CP ni kan, you kena tengok for scoliosis. Okay, this, this are the thing that will uh, will have prognostic factor. Okay, kalau patient ada scoliosis, then you tahu dia akan mati in 30 years, less than 30 years dia akan mati. Okay, dia akan start ada coma hypertension, dia akan ada recurrent infection, pneumonia. And then, uh, patient ada scoliosis and then ada especially pneumonia and this is a poor prognosis. Okay, scoliosis and then abdomen you kena tengok ada constipation Okay, ada drooling saliva uh, Kalau sign of, sign of swallowing my problem kan, dia ada drooling saliva Okay, you've mentioned, you kata tak ada strido kan uh, Then that's good, you boleh kata, tak ada strido, it's good lah Okay, lepas tu uh, Apa lagi eh, uh, blindness Kalau you boleh kata patient is not focusing uh, Then possible patient ni ada uh, cortical blindness Okay uh, this need practice and need uh, reading, okay. Uh, and then what else? Uh, yang lain tu. Patient memang quadriplegic eh, bukan diplegic eh. Ah, uh, quadriplegic. Okay lah. Uh, because quadriplegic. Hmm. Okay lah. And then microcephaly is very important. Okay, patient, patient. Uh, we should expect patient with this kind of severe hypoxic insult causing CP ni, dia mesti ada microcephaly and you don't diagnose failure to thrive based on one reading okay, one one measurement okay, you can say patient is small for age uh, patient is small for age uh, I would like to confirm uh, whether patient is uh, failure to thrive by plotting the growth chart so you have to look at the trend definitely patient with quadriplegic CP most of the time they are small from beginning okay, they are not they are not because, not because of failure to thrive but it's actually from the beginning lah, they are small from the beginning especially the head lah, the head circumference okay, that's it, it's good. anything else you want to add? sorry lah, I dah berapa minggu kat sini, tak pernah ada patient, tiba-tiba hari ni ada pula patient Boom. okay, ada lagi soalan, any question? Doktor, uh, untuk cerebral palsy ni macam how detail uh, macam management kita nak kena tahu pasal cerebral palsy? 
Ha, there's a problem. Uh, because this is something common, okay? This is something common and definitely will you you get this case in your exam, okay? So try to go very deep. Okay, don't go superficial. Okay, because that will distinguish you from others. Okay, when when I say deep, <coughs> okay, look at the social aspect, look at the management of the chronic because usually patient with CP they don't have much acute problem they've got more to chronic problem they especially tu lah epilepsy kalau dia hemiplegic biasa akan dia epilepsy lah quadriplegic ni biasa more to dystonia macam tu um, biasanya epilepsy uh, constipation feeding problem growth uh, ni benda ni you have to tackle in your long case you have to tackle this because uh, this is something in chronic lah uh, how depth try to be depth as depth as possible okay you may not i mean tak adalah sampai botox benda that's beyond the discussion ataupun uh, apa tu uh, muscle relaxing ataupun uh, baclofen ke kan uh, antispasmodic uh, baclofen benda macam ni yang tu maybe tak perlulah sampai situ tapi the basic macam constipation uh, epilepsy yang tu you kena kena tip top lah kot Okay and then hmm, tu juga cuma examination lah examination of patient CP may not be straightforward okay. even any patient pun lah patient yang datang dengan uh, pneumonia ke kalau you tahu dia dah ada underlying something uh, bila in long case because you have to examine whole all system kan in long case then you have to find the complication uh, bad sore okay, which is very common uh, any patient yang chronic lah, especially yang bad bound, huh, you kena tengok benda-benda ni Okay Okay, anything else? Okay, so kalau tak ada apa-apa, kita boleh uh, tangguh lah Kalau you, got, you guys ada question, you can always whatsapp me lah Okay, uh, okay kita tangguh dengan Anyway, congratulations, very good presentation both Okay Okay, tangguh dengan Tasbih Kafara dan suatu mas Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you, 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 Doctor.